Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Through the gift of faith, open our eyes to behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first reading for this third Sunday of Easter comes from Acts chapter 2, verse 14a and 36 through 41. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. We will join together as the Lord's people in reading the epistle lesson, also on the back of your worship folder, from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 25. Following the reading, we will rise and sing the Alleluia in verse on page 205. We read together, If you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear, Throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Will you please rise? morning. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. 
but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know these things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us? while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures. And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Our confession of faith will be in the words of the Nicene Creed. That's on page 206, and we will confess the words together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Holy Spirit, one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father,
Jesus died and rose again so that we might live. Our text that will serve as the base of our message is our gospel lesson from Luke 24, verses are 13 to 35. Dear friends in Christ, back in 1799, the armies of Napoleon appeared on the heights above the town of Feldkirch, Austria. It was Easter, and the rays of sunshine glittered on the weapons of the French as they appeared drawn up on the hills to the west of town. The town council was hastily called together to consult what was to be done. After much discussion, the dean of the church rose and said, My brothers, it is Easter day. We have been reckoning our own strength, and that fails. Let us turn to God, ring the bells, and have service as usual, and leave the matter in God's hands. So they agreed to do as he said. Then from the church towers in Feldkirch, there rang out joyous peals in honor of the resurrection, and the streets filled with worshipers hastening to worship. The French heard the sudden ringing of the bells with surprise and alarm. They concluded that the Austrian army had arrived to relieve the town. So they hastily fled, and before the bells had ceased, not a Frenchman was to be seen. Today, the Easter bells still ring with joy. And they rang for two men on the way to Emmaus. And the living Lord rekindled their faith so that their hearts burned within them. Do you still have the ringing joy of Easter in your soul? Let's take a walk and find out. Are your hearts still burning. So we join the two men on the road. They are experiencing life without Christ and wondering what has happened. There is no burning fire of faith or hope left in their hearts. You see, without the living Christ, the heart is cold. We see this every day in our world. The cold heart expresses itself in the coarsest language, the crudest behavior, the cruelest actions. The cold heart seeks warm by embracing more and more things that are contrary to God's word. And we can have a cold heart as well. If we don't suffer that way, we may experience a sad heart. A heart weighed down with sorrow or suffering or sin. Do you have a, a troubled heart? You are perplexed by the problems of life. And you let it affect your mind and your attitude. How about a weak heart? You're struggling with the trials and temptations that are thrown your way. Is your heart doubting? Wondering if God is really walking with you and working for your good. Or maybe you suffer a lukewarm heart. You question the Bible. And societal change creeps into your brain. And you need a good fire of faith to lift you up. Well, the living Christ comes to open our minds. He comes to warm our hearts and give us a living hope. He joins the walkers and he explains the scriptures. He meets the sad, troubled, weak, doubting, and lukewarm hearts with hope. Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures concerning himself. The words of Jesus rekindle faith. The hearts of these men are set on fire. They are burning with joy. 
Is it the same joy you have? As Christ walks with you, do you feel his presence? He is the promised Messiah and risen Savior. Faith and hope and joy abound for these men and for us. Please stay with us, Lord. We want to hear more. And they run to tell the disciples. And there in Jerusalem, Jesus appears again to the believers. And their hearts are warming up. And we have that same warmth in our hearts. Life can no longer bog us down with guilt or the fear of death. Life is not hopeless. We have been born anew into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And we do not walk alone in this life. We do not walk alone to the grave. The risen Christ promises, because I live, you also will live. So there's a little more giddy up in our steps. The two disciples were just kind of shuffling along, but now they have good news to share. And it means they hurry to tell it. The living Lord changes everything. We have a living Lord in the midst of our sorrow and joy, in the midst of life and death. We live by faith in him and in the power of the resurrection. Easter Island is one of the most remote islands. Twenty-two. Now, fewer than 8,000 people live here, but many tourists visit occasionally. But you see, for us, Easter is no island. This Sunday is no holiday excursion. We don't celebrate Easter and then forget it. It's an ongoing reality because as we sang in our opening hymn, Jesus lives. When life is grinding you down, remember Christ is risen. When facing a seemingly insurmountable problem, we have hope because Christ is risen. And when standing at the grave of a loved one, all is not sad because Christ is risen. And when your steps are heavy and sagging, Christ walks with you. And he speaks to us in his word. And he opens our eyes to his grace and love. And hearts are warm. And they burn with joy and peace. And weak hearts are filled with strength. And doubtful hearts are given confidence. And lukewarm hearts have conviction. And cold hearts are given heat from the lifeblood poured from his sacred veins. Wasn't that a great walk? Don't you feel better? Amen. Please rise for the prayer of the church. With each of the petitions this morning, I will finish with the words, Lord, in your mercy, will you please respond, hear our prayer. O Father of the risen Christ, in your Son's appearance to the Emmaus disciples, he expounded the scriptures and revealed himself in the breaking of the bread. Grant us grace that we too may perceive him as our Savior through his word and rejoice to receive him as the bread of life for the salvation of our souls. By the word and sacraments, renew our piety this Easter tide, that we may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all, your spirit opens the Holy Scriptures to the hearts of your people. Enlighten this, our congregation, by the resurrection light that never fades, that our hearts may burn in faith towards you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have poured out your spirit upon us, that we might believe your truth and raise our sons and daughters in it. Bless all parents that they may faithfully catechize their children in your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our God of compassion, those who suffer cry to you. Hear them and answer them with grace sufficient for all their needs. Heal the sick according to your will. Comfort the wounded and give your peace to the dying. We especially pray for Renee Pinson's Uncle Virgil, hospitalized in Rock Island. You are our help and strength for this life and eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your compassion is made known to us through your son's breaking of the bread. Open our hearts and mouths to receive forgiveness in the body and blood of Christ, who suffered for us and has entered into his glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, have mercy on us when we are foolish and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken about your Son. Pour out your Spirit on us through the preaching of the Gospel, that the Scriptures might be open to us through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship will continue at the top of page 208 with our service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing, Our Lord 
Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith. Now may this true body 
body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. taste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated.
good morning and in the name of the Lord, uh, may he be with you uh, during this week as uh, your hearts hopefully are burning in faith. Uh, thank you to everybody who supported us in the uh, Walk for Life. Uh, it was yesterday morning, so Tony and I and Hope and Ezra and uh, Mary Ann had a nice walk in the uh, cool weather and a little bit of snow, but uh, thank you very much for uh, supporting us in that. Uh, just uh, have a couple of announcements. A uh, week from uh, tomorrow night, uh, on Monday, May 1st, we'll be having an informational meeting about uh, this trip to Germany next summer to see the Luther site. So if you are interested in that, uh, please come to the meeting. I'll have all the information, and uh, uh, that's all it is. It is an informational meeting to let you know about everything. So that'll be on May 1st, 630 also, uh, please note, especially those of you in small group Bible study, on our calendar, we've got it for May 14th, but uh, we are finishing the class, not finishing, but taking a break for the summer, so our last class is actually April 30th, but I know how some of you in small group uh, notice your bulletin and read it very thoroughly, so there is no class May 14th, uh, please be aware of that. Are there any other announcements? Yes, that's what I thought. Easter lilies. Easter lilies are available for pickup. We have some plastic bags up here in the front pew. So if you will come up and find the one that has your name on it. <laughs> or just take one, right, Diane? Yeah, there, there are no names. Okay, uh, so uh, come up and get your Easter lily and take that home and uh, enjoy it. All right, any other announcements? Thank you. The peace of the Lord be with you.